Hi friends, here is Lucas. This is a free lesson from my best-selling course about Kotlin coroutines and flow for Android development. You can find the link in the description to get the course for a nice discount. Let's now talk about some of the most basic terminal operators. I created a new package called Terminal Operators in the flow playground package and in there I created a new file called one flow versus lists. In the main function let's create a new flow that emits the integer value 1 after 100 milliseconds and the integer value 2 after 100 additional milliseconds. Let's also add a print statement whenever we emit a new value. So when we create a new flow with the flow builder, no code is actually executed. This flow builder here is basically just a declaration. This means that no code is executed when we only create a flow. This is different to collections, for example. So for instance, if we create a new list by using the build list function, and also add print statements whenever we add a new item to the collection, And when we now execute this code, you can see that these print statements in the flow builder are not executed because they are not printed in the console on the right. So this means that the code in the flow wasn't executed. On the other hand, as you can see in the console, the code when building the list was executed. So a list was built and the two elements were added. So as you can see, by only using a flow builder to create a new flow, no producer code is actually executed. But when we create a collection with build list, the builder function code is immediately executed. In fact, it wouldn't even be possible to execute the code in the flow builder because it calls two different suspend functions, delay and emit. And of course, these suspend functions can only be called from a coroutine, but right now we are in a regular main function and not a coroutine. So this code simply can't run on its own. But how can we execute the flow builder code now? We can achieve this by calling a special operator, a terminal operator on the flow. And the terminal operator that we already know is the collect operator. So let's copy this file and create a new file and call the new file to collect. And in this new file, Let's remove the code to build the list again. And instead, let's take the flow and let's call the terminal operator collect in order to execute the flow builder code and to receive the items of the flow. And again, there is a problem and we see this familiar error message again. And it says that collect is a suspend function and we have to call it from either a coroutine or another suspend function. But why does the collect function need to be a suspend function? As mentioned before, it is possible to call suspend functions from flow builders. And so every flow needs a coroutine in which it can be executed in order to be able to call these suspend functions. So if we want to execute the flow builder code, we need to call a terminal operator on the flow. And since every terminal operator is a suspend function, 
we need to call it from a coroutine. And this coroutine is also the same coroutine in which the code of the flow builder will be executed. So let's now simply use the simple coroutine builder run blocking to create a new coroutine and then collect the flow in there. And when we now run this new example here, you can see that the code in the flow builder is now executed since the two print statements emitting first value and emitting second value is printed out. The coroutine that we created with run blocking here will suspend until the flow completes. So basically when the complete flow builder code was executed. This means that if the flow actually never completes, this program here would actually never finish. So if we, for instance, add a while true loop to the end of the flow builder, and execute this example again. You can see that this program continues to run since our flow never completes. Let's now remove the while true loop again. To find out which items we actually receive, let's now add a print statement to the collect lambda. And when we now run this example again, you can see that the previous example is still running. So we have to stop this one and rerun the new one. You can see that we receive both of the emitted values in the collect block. Now, of course, there are also other terminal operators than collect available. For example, there is first which returns only the first emitted value. So let's create a new file three first. And instead of collect, let's call first. Then let's assign the result of the call to flow.first to a new property called item. And let's print out this item. When we now run this small example, you can see that with first we receive the first emitted value and this value is then printed out in the console. What's interesting here is that not only is the second value not received, it also didn't get emitted because emitting second value is never executed and never printed out. And this is because by using the terminal operator first, the flow gets canceled once the first item got received. If the flow wouldn't emit any items, a call to first would throw a no such element exception. To avoid this, we can simply use first or null. In this case, null will be returned if the flow doesn't emit any items. Another option is to pass a predicate to first. For example, we want to get the first value that is bigger than one. And when we execute this code now, you can see that both the first and the second value is emitted, but only the second one is received. And this is because the first item doesn't fulfill this predicate because one isn't bigger than one. And so it is discarded, but the second value is received because two is bigger than one. And so received two is printed out. Besides first, there is also the last terminal operator, which returns the last emitted item. So let's create a new file and use last there. And when we run this main function with the last operator, 
you can see that only the last emitted value, so 2, is received. Of course, there's also the function last or null available, which will return null when the flow doesn't emit any values. These two operators, first and last, probably remind you of Kotlin's collection processing operators. And yes, a lot of operators that are available for collections also exist for flows. The next terminal operator that we will now take a look at is similar to first and last. It's the terminal operator called Singly. Let's also create a new file for this one and use it there. The single operator will return a single item, but only if one, and that means exactly one, item is emitted. So in our code here, since we are emitting two items when we run the code, an illegal argument exception will be thrown. This is, of course, because our flow emits two values. So when we comment out, for example, the second emission and run it again, you can now see that the single emission is received and printed out. Other terminal operators that are very useful are to set and to list. Let's also create a new file for them. And let's copy this run blocking block and then use the to set operator in the first run blocking block and to list in the second run blocking block. And if we run this example here, you can see that the toList and the toSet operators wait until the flow completes and then they return all emitted items as a collection, like a list or a set. And as you can see in the print output, here we first receive a set with all emissions and then we receive a list with all emissions. Operators like first or to list and to set are very helpful for tests. The next terminal operator that I'm going to show you is fold. Let's remove the second run blocking block again. And in the first one, let's use fold. Fold expects an initial value. So let's define, for instance, 5 for it. And in the lambda that we pass, we have access to the accumulator and the currently emitted value. The fold operator is very similar to the reduce operator. And with it, we can do things like calculating the sum of all emitted items. So every time a new item is emitted, the lambda is executed. And the defined operation, in our case, adding the emitted item to the accumulator is defined. But how does this work exactly? Initially, so for the first emitted item, the accumulator has the value that we defined for the initial value, so 5. And the value of the first emitted item is 1. For each subsequent emission, the accumulator is the result of the operation from the last lambda block execution. So the result of the first lambda block execution is 6, because 5 plus 1 is 6. When the second value is emitted, the accumulator is the value of the last execution, so 6, and the second emitted item is 2. And in the lambda, in the 
operation where we sum up the accumulator and the emitted item. So 6 plus 2, the value is 8. And since 2 is the second emission, the final result of the fold operator should be 8. So if we now execute the code to check if our calculation was right, you can see that we were right and we received 8 with our fold operator. As mentioned before, there's also the reduce operator available, which is pretty similar to fold. However, with reduce, you can't specify an initial value and therefore the operator in the lambda will only be called once the second element is received. All right, now we covered all of the basic terminal operators. We needed them in order to execute a flow and to receive values that the flow emits. Let's now quickly recap which terminal operators we used in this lesson. At first we used the simple collect operator, which receives all emissions from the flow. Then we used the first terminal operator in order to only get the first emission of the flow. Similar to the first operator is the last operator, but instead of the first item with last, we get the last emission of the flow. The single terminal operator returns a single emission of a flow but only if the flow emits a single value. Otherwise, if the flow emits no values or multiple values, an illegal argument exception is thrown. Afterwards, we took a look at the toList and toSet operators, and these operators wait until the flow completes, and then all the emissions will be returned as a list or a set. Last but not least, we had a look at the fold and the reduce operator, and these are useful in order to perform operations like summing up all of the emitted items of a flow. So if you want to dive deeper into coroutines and flow, then I can highly recommend my complete course that contains everything to fully understand and successfully use coroutines and flow in your apps. We will together create a stock live tracking app that uses flow extensively. You will also learn about state flows, shared flows, channels, and many, many other topics. You can find a link to the course in the description, and I would love to have you on board.